The Deckard Northcutt Case Files, Case Number One, Part Five The Warehouse. I open my eyes but cannot see a thing. It's complete darkness. I'm tied to a chair. My arms are behind my back with a chair and tied pretty tightly. I can't wiggle out of it. My legs are bound as well. I have a hood over my head, a burlap sack from the feel of it. It's also tied at the neck. I'm trying to get a sense of where I'm at. I can't. I can't get a feel of anything. I was hit pretty hard. I hear footsteps. It's a slow walk coming closer towards me. I hear a second set of steps now too. They seem to be approaching with caution. I feel scared. I assume the footsteps stop because I can't hear them anymore. Silence. The steps start up again, closer and closer, slowly. I feel a hand on my shoulder and a whisper comes. Dex, is that you? It's my partner, Detective Joe Carson. What a relief. I reply yes and he unties the hood and removes it. I see his face. He looks scared. It's pretty dark in here and I can't figure out where I am. He continues to untie my hands and legs. I look up and I see the other individual. It's Leon Cooper, the investigative reporter. I ask Joe what the hell is he doing here? He replied that they both had invitations to the warehouse, that their presence was needed tonight. They didn't know that they both had been invited. Then Joe mentioned the invite said that there would be gifts for them to see. Joe continues to tell me that he is glad now that they came and see they were able to find me. I was missing all night. I ask him what time was it? He said it's 7.30 p.m. I've been out all day and overnight. I must have been drugged after I got hit. This is craziness. I get helped up out of the chair by Joe. I'm a little woozy at first, but I'm starting to get my bearings. I ask, what warehouse are we in? Joe mentions the warehouse above the river by the lake. The one that's used for boats. Leon interrupted and was saying that we should go back and check out those crates. I ask, what crates? And Joe said, there are crates over in the middle of the warehouse. They believe to be part of the so-called gifts. It's dark in here, but luckily Joe and Leon brought some flashlights. We inch up to the three wooden crates in the middle of what is now an empty warehouse besides the three crates that I see, each separated by ten feet, it seems. The crates are standing on end. They are, by the looks of it, seven feet tall and four feet wide. They are above the shipping doors and the floor, those that are used to lower the items onto boats underneath. One crate has something written. I ask Leon, shine your light over here. He does and I get a closer examine of the crate. It's written in blood. It says, only the true will rule. Damn, again with that weird statement. It's just odd. Joe was looking at the second crate and it said, no more sheeps and wolves clothing. Crap, what the hell does that mean now? Joe said, at least this ties to the other two murder scenes. I agreed. Leon said, guys, come over here. Joe and I walked over to the third crate. It also has a message in blood. It says, one liter down, open at your own risk. We stop and think for a minute. I look and I see a crowbar on top of the first crate. It was just sticking out enough for me to see. I walk over and say, to hell with it. I grab the crowbar and I open the first crate. I remove the front and my God, a man with a bullet hole in his head. He also is encased in concrete up to the neck. A pair of gym shoes lies next to the head. Horrible. I can only assume it's a south side natural with the same saying of the true rule rule thing. Also the shoes and such. Leon mentioned that the gym shoes is a symbol of the underground mob. It means you can't ever run from us. Ah, that makes sense now. Clever. Leon Cooper is a pain in the pooper, but he is smart. He's also been an investigative reporter for a long time. He picks things up quickly. What about the true rule, I ask him. Leon shrugged his shoulders and said he doesn't know. Well, I guess you can't know everything. 
We then go to the second crate. I open the crate and see another body encased in concrete up to the neck. Also, the victim has a sheep covering his head, like a sheep mask, freaky looking as it's staring at me. I walk up slowly and remove the sheep skin. I confirm that the victim has indeed been shot in the head too. I asked Joe and Leanne if they recognized the two and they both said no. Damn. Two more deaths now. That's four within the same symbolism, different but matches the two scenes. Plus the torn apart informant. Still, how the hell did anyone know we were at that meeting besides Tommy, Fat Belly, and Leon? I'll need to walk that one over later, I thought to myself. I told Leon that none of this info leaves here for now. He can't report this. This must be a couple of the missing werewolves the informant told me about. He said okay and nodded his head. Joe asked if we should take a look at the third crate as it has that warning. I said yes, we should. Maybe the warning is another symbol or something. Joe agrees and we go to the third crate. Again, I read the message written in blood. It says, one liter down, open at your own risk. I pause, take a deep breath, and I slowly take the crowbar and insert it into the crack and split the crate and remove the lid. It's a third victim encased in concrete. He's also shot in the head. I assume all are done with silver bullets, of course. Joe and Leon move in closer and take a look. Leon screams and says, My God, it's Joe, the wig Patino. He went missing two days ago, I heard from a source. Crap. It's rumored that he is second in command for the Southside Naturals. If indeed he is the mob associate, and if this gets out, it definitely will start a war. Joey the wig. I believe he's called that because of the very thick head of hair. These guys and their nicknames. I shake my head. All of a sudden I hear a click and the floor gave away, the door hatch, and the first crate falls below into the city river with a huge splash. What the hell is happening, Joe asks. I said, I don't know. Leon shrugged. I stand there in wonderment. I hear a second click and the floor gave away and the second crate falls through the floor down below into the city river with another huge splash. The evidence is being destroyed, I yelled. Then I spot an envelope on the third victim laying by his head. I grab it and I open it. I see three photos. I pull them out and they each show all three victims. I read the note that is included in the envelope out loud to Joe and Leon. The note says, these are copies of the original will be sent to the respective groups and copies to the newspapers. Oh, and by the way, you better run. Ah, crap. Joe, Leon, run, get out of here. I start to hear a clicking noise like a clock. I scream, it's a bomb. And we all run in towards the exit. Then all of a sudden. Part six next week. I'd like to give a tip of the hat to the patrons of this channel. Your support and generosity is very much appreciated and I thank you all. If you'd like to become a patron of this channel, please see the link below. Also please hit the like and subscribe, also share this video, it helps the channel grow. If you'd like to get notifications, please hit the little bell. I want to thank you all for coming and listening to this video and I appreciate you all coming. Until next time.